Welcome everyone to another quick test. Together with some other things I also brought the Sun IPX mainboard. As far as I remember this is a smaller brother, so to say, of the Spark Station 2 or other systems. In my opinion it more or less is a more compact and integrated Spark Station 2. It has the same Sun Color Graphic 6, Sun GSX graphics here. In the Sun Spark Station 2 it's an NSBus card, here it's on the logic board, together with the video RAM, the processor and such. This only has two SBUS slots instead of three, however on this the graphic is integrated. I think I got this together with the uh, Spark Station 2 when it was donated to me for Linux work and as recycling destination as in 2005 this system was already extremely vintage. And working on the system the other month I unfortunately destroyed the NVRAM. As you know the NVRAM is always empty and I already filed this open. This is the original NVRAM from the Spark Station 2. And after all this work, which took probably 20 minutes, I only wanted to test it that it still works and I accidentally plugged it in in the opposite direction, 180 degree rotated. This only happened because I looked through the IC socket. There was some white cable, so I initially assumed this is a zero pin orientation. However, after I realized it doesn't work, it became hot and is destroyed. So if you plug this in, rotate it, it becomes hot and is destroyed rather instantly, I guess. And after I took it out and looked, I saw on both sides there was some white sh shining through. Uh, it's unfortunate you work so long on this fiddling and uh, put so much work into open this carefully and then you destroy it with one second of not being careful enough. In retrospect, I should have realized all the other ICs were in the other direction, but that is what you get after drilling and filing 20 minutes and yeah, hurrying in the last minute and then you have bad luck. The unfortunate thing is I ordered a new one. You see this is a new package I ordered the other month. However, it does not fully work and uh, as I said in the other video already, so many people advise to order new ones and not waste time in retrofitting old ones. And I ordered a new one and it also doesn't work. As At least um, the NVRAM does work but the timer does not work, it does not start. Or other people wrote also similar findings and that the specification was changed in production or something. Looking on this, uh, this is the Sun original here. And I think this was already retrofitted before I got it. So this is probably already the first replacement and not the first one that came with the original Spark Station. So this must be already an aftermarket replacement. It's really a pity I destroyed this one because I guess this one worked fully. So this video also serves as a warning for you if you do this kind of things and also if you want to see how this looks here. Um, this is to file open here in quite the middle and here's the battery and yeah. I most likely practice this again on this one because this battery is also dead so we have to open this one also. What I wanted to do shortly today in this video is to see if this IPX board still works. As far as I remember I tested it. I guess with the power supply of the Spark Station. As far as I remember it did not hit any life sign. As far as I remember I also already got it without a case. So I got the spare board together with the Spark Station or so. And I guess the previous owner already fiddled around with it or something. Um, I guess it is broken but today we quickly retest it just to finally document it. And But in any case even if it works I will likely get the NVRAM over and maybe even check if the memory modules are larger. Maybe I can slightly upgrade the Spark Station memory. Although this board is highly integrated and quite nice, I don't have the case for this. So although the Spark Station 2 is slightly less integrated, it is nicer to have it in the case. So yeah, the power supply looks like it is matching. Actually, it's a different memory anyway. Maybe this is why I didn't move over. I just realized these are different. I think it's a different form factor of memories, unfortunately. So much for the memory upgrade. So this plug looks like it could be the same and as I said I think I remember testing it already 15 years ago. Let's see what happens today. So power, keyboard, AGA. Actually it is blinking and oh, in the meantime I lost a key on my keyboard. Okay so it's actually showing some error code. Um, then probably 
try to find out what this error code could mean. So apparently it should potentially put out some more additional power on self test information over the serial port. Unfortunately, Sun was so super clever to have this compact design with mini DIN serial ports. So I would first solder a serial adapter for this and likely we don't have this in stock here unless I cut it from a Sun keyword, which I probably will not do. So if I want to see the postcodes, I have to buy a connector and then solder an adapter and then hope that it works. So that is for another day. At least I also remembered correct that this was not working, unfortunately, back in the day already. And um, yeah, maybe another day we further check what's wrong with this. But for now, I test the NVRAM timekeeper in the Spark station and to drill it open and solder a battery onto it to have a fully working timer in the Spark station too again. <clears throat> As you can see, and compared to previous videos, at least the open boot prompt or open firmware is no longer printing the starting timer message there with this old NVRAM from the Spark IPX. So I guess that's a good thing or a good sign. And I just boot Linux again. Some of this Linux kernel may not be able to set the date and time right now. Not sure if that is due to some NVRAM defect or some kernel bug regression. So I'm rebooting to see if the time at least elapsed um, some three or four minutes since the first boot. But then I still have to cut and drill into the NVRAM and solder a battery and hopefully this time not destroy it. Yeah, a little bit strange that um, the date and time is only one minute 36, I guess. That should be more like three or four minutes. So I hope there's also not more wrong with this NVRAM. Still some more tinkering left for the Spark Station future. I couldn't believe it myself. I really found a DIN serial cable here, actually from an ELSA modem. Elsa V90 or something, 56 kbit or so. And um, while I was just preparing your things, I'm also I'm not really sure I measured the pins. I have the impression this could be wired as null modem cable, surprisingly from this modem. But uh, not 100% sure, you never know if the diagrams in the internet are just correct on this side. So maybe they had this reversed also here on the Sun pinout. So not 100% sure about this yet. However, I found that on some website that these memory modules are numbered 0 and 1 or so, or 1 and 2 or whatever. Actually, I think it started from 0. Actually, on this obsolete.com, and there you should be able to see that they number here ZIM 0 and 1, which are empty on my board. So maybe this postcode is just memory, which would theoretically make some sort of sense. So maybe whoever gave me this board back in the day Either they already got it non-working or they took out memory that they need for something else and it simply doesn't work because someone confiscated their some memory. So let's see what happens A with the serial port in case of and also if we really... Where are your pictures? The thing is I think this picture here has no memory installed as far as I can see at least. It's a little bit funny. So. Let's see what happens if we plug in the memory. Actually, I could also open the service manual actually to double check this. Uh, just of this, I can't find the service manual, but this numbering matches. So U03109807 is really interesting numbering. And um, yeah, one, one would think that the numbers increase here of this PCB mounted numbering scheme, but yeah, so. This is the only indication we have right now and it doesn't work anyway. So let's move the memory over and see if we get something on the serial port as well. Right now I don't have an NVRAM in there, but at least the Spark Station boots with no NVRAM present, I think. Well, booting is relative at least giving an error. Actually, we already get you something on the serial port. So then I'm lucky in uh, lucky that this is indeed an NVRAM cable and this is actually maybe the first time not counting the T2 Niagara which was headless and I had to serial connect and such. So this looks quite good. So by the way they, they say 16 megabytes. This would mean this are 32 megabytes which is twice as much as the Spark Station 2 has. That is cool. And also this Ytech um, CPU has integrated FPU. Maybe that could be slightly faster because this 
FPU here on this older Cypress CPU. The FPU is separated here, this TI FPU. So maybe this integrated FPU leads in better performance. But then I don't have a case, maybe I need to build my own case then. So I think this looks good. Um, there are not really errors and it says here 60 megabytes found in address range 0 and uh, hex 1 million or something. Uh, let's see if we get, although there is no other uh, input. Interesting. Maybe it detected the serial cable then. Um, but that would mean I have a working IPX board and the only thing that prevented me from using it back in the day, of course, 15 years ago, I was not yet so familiar with all the Unix and high-end Unix and Spark details and such. So only now, of course, it looks easy if you have this board and um, if you get such kind of boards the first time, you do not have all this prior knowledge to investigate all these things. Although it looks simple just to attach something. From my PC heritage, it also did not come so much to my mind to have diagnostics on this report, which is something you generally probably didn't have on PC BIOSes. But I'm curious. Let's just for the educational fun move this over again and see what we get on this report with this memory modules installed in the wrong slots. Um, yeah, it indeed says 16 megabytes found in this address range and now it indeed shows you the same error code on the keyboard. Doesn't really show a real error though. But it's not getting to the same OK prompt that we got to earlier, so it really doesn't like the memory in this configuration. It's interesting that it's probably running from the caches, I guess, to run this PROM, or it's running directly from the ROM to run the uh, ROM code even without memory installed. Actually, that would be, as we're already experimenting, let's see what happens without memory, if it can run the power on self test out of the ROM and caches only. Indeed, it can run the self-test from ROM and cache only. Interesting. Now the error is different though. Um, now this one light went off, so now it's only one light here. And before we had two lights, so let's put in the memory in the correct location and see if we can really boot. Uh, maybe I unplug the serial to see immediately if we get graphic output then. Is there again? There is again a light on. It's still working on starting the retime clock there though. This is exactly the message we got on the setting dear. But we have no lights anymore. I get this new incompatible NVRAM and see what happens if we plug it in. So the NVRAM has this marking there. And this markings are, as I said earlier, if you have this upside down 180 degree flipped, you destroy it because the power is reversed. I wonder what this is, this failure tot F2, is it a memory range? Hmm. It's uh, really interesting. Taking the NVRAM out gives more messages with the NVRAM in this error came there immediately. So this failure there was slightly up. So just getting this bit failure there is apparently NVRAM related. So maybe I move over this more matching NVRAM then to see if we can get this machine more to life. Interesting, this is the first time I got this message. Also with the spark station, so this is probably exactly the, and by the way, now it's coming up. So this, um, so now it said uh, tot oscillator not running, kickstart in progress. And this is probably exactly the reason what uh, does not work with this newer, although this is exactly the right part number, ST um, M48T02. So they are really incompatible. And this is, other people were laughing on forums uh, about people um, Scrooge uh, McDuck's 
drilling here and soldering batteries on those timekeepers and people should just go and buy a new one but the new ones don't work they are somehow incompatible maybe one day i find out what exactly but um, now we really came up here this we have not seen before and um, the question is now so now i have this nvram in the question is now uh, do we have graphic no there is no graphic output question is where it is hanging now uh, no serial here apparently no error there maybe we power on with all the serial cable in case this usb serial thing is not 100 percently compatible with the sun serial stuff okay so um as it's hard to tell there are no errors with the sun ipx booting up um, but it's hanging after probing the sbus cards i wanted to do the nvram modification now let's hope i don't destroy it this time 